Welcome to our online worship service together as we celebrate the second Sunday of the Easter season. Earlier this week, Cynthia sent out the order of worship to follow along at home. If you didn't receive one, no problem. Just go to our website, epiphanychandler.org, click the devotion tab, and right by today's worship service video is a PDF that you can download and follow along. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And let us begin our worship this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us sing Holy, Holy, Holy. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to bow your heads for our opening prayer. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace 
confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The epistle for the second Sunday of Easter is from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This is the inheritance kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes, even though it's refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls." And this is the word of the Lord. Our gospel is from the 20th chapter of John, verses 19 through 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see of the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. And now let us sing Jesus Christ is risen today. Jesus Christ is risen today, ah, hallelujah, our triumphant holy day, ah, hallelujah, who did once upon the cross, ah, Cross and grave 
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. We all have doubts right now. For example, will the state of Arizona really reopen for business on May 1st? Or will we have another 30 days of waiting before we reopen? We also have doubts about matters of faith. But we shouldn't be afraid of those doubts, and today's gospel teaches us that. One day, Martin Luther was asked this question. Why do we more readily believe Satan when he terrifies than Christ when he consoles? Luther replied, because we are better equipped to doubt than hope, because hope comes from the Spirit of God. But despair and doubts come from our own spirit. Luther's talking about our sinful nature and how we default to doubting rather than looking to God and his peace and hope when we doubt. As sinners and saints in Christ, we should expect doubts to arise in our lives. However, we should never leave them alone. Every doubt needs to be dealt with. And today's gospel highlights three things that we can do that are helpful and important when doubts arise. Today's gospel reading is where that term doubting Thomas arises from. But I think Thomas is unfairly treated. For instance, in John chapter 11, verses 14 through 16, we read this. So then he, that's Jesus, told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas called Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. In the last days leading up to Christ's crucifixion on the cross, Thomas had great confidence in the Lord and was courageous in front of the other disciples. But do you also realize that Thomas was not the only disciples, one of the disciples, I should say, who had doubts? Let's turn to another event that takes place immediately before Christ's ascension into heaven. In Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 17, we read this. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Even after 40 days of Jesus' post-resurrection appearances, the disciples worshipped him, but some doubted. Thomas certainly had doubts. He was not in the room with the other disciples when Jesus made his first appearance. He was not prepared to believe that Jesus had actually arisen from the dead. But the Bible is clear that other disciples had doubts too. Doubts are contagious, and they lead to fear and even panic. Here's how today's gospel begins in John chapter 20, verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. Doubt about Jesus' resurrection had turned into fear, and then to panic among the ten men. And that's even more contagious than the coronavirus. 
But fortunately for the disciples, their doubts are calm because Jesus appears to the ten of them. And this is the first important point in dealing with any doubts we have. When we are doubting, connecting with Jesus is the way to resolve them. Why? Because Jesus brings peace just like he did to those disciples when he appeared to them. Three times in today's gospel, Jesus says, peace be with you. When we have peace, we don't have doubt. We don't experience fear and we don't panic. Now, we all know in our heads that Jesus is with us all the time during this pandemic. However, when doubts arise, we default to our sinful nature and try to resolve them with reason or logic or emotions. Now, sometimes that does work. Imagine that your spouse is angry with you when he or she left from work, but greets you with a long kiss and a tight hug when they come home. But when you're experiencing difficult times like the coronavirus pandemic, or suddenly you find out that you were exposed to someone with the virus, reason, logic, and emotions don't help because they all are going to lead to fear, doubt, and panic. So how do you get Jesus' peace during times of doubt, fear, and panic? Well, first, let's use our computers. Google this, doubt, fear, or panic, and what the Bible has to say about it. God's word has plenty to say when we have a crisis of faith. Just go to God in prayer. That's the second thing you can do in that situation. Watch our daily devotions and participate in our Sunday worship services. And then the fourth thing we can do is talk with another mature Christian somebody whose advice you've learned to count on. These are all helpful tools that God gives to us to reconnect with Jesus when we are faced with doubt. That's the key to gaining the peace of Christ. But what if our doubts are specifically about God? Well, the same principle still applies. It's essential that we keep engaging with Jesus, to keep listening to him through his word, the Holy Bible. The last verse of today's gospel tells us why God gave us the Bible. Listen again to John chapter 20, verses 30 through 31. Jesus did many other miracle, miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Everything written in the Bible is for our benefit. The purpose of the Bible is to point you to Jesus Christ and through the Holy Spirit create saving faith in you that he is the sole Savior from sin. And here's a helpful tip. Whenever you read the Bible, Old Testament or New, ask yourself as you're reading that passage, how is this showing me or pointing to Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior? The second important point from today's gospel is how Jesus responds to our doubts. That is, Jesus addresses your doubts in a compassionate way. Do you notice the way Jesus approaches Thomas? He comes to Thomas and says to him directly, peace be with you. Jesus then addresses Thomas's doubts. He made it possible for Thomas to touch his resurrected body in order for him to believe it was really Jesus and that he had risen from the dead. But that proof that Thomas had is not the proof that we have. We don't see Jesus in his visible, resurrected body today. And at that moment, 
after Thomas realized that Jesus had resurrected from the dead, Jesus talked to us today. Verse 29 of today's gospel says this. Jesus said to Thomas, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who haven't seen, yet have believed. That's you and me through faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus is talking directly to us. The resurrection of Jesus is based on fact. The gospel was written by eyewitnesses or close associates of them, those who saw Jesus themselves. But knowing those facts don't save us. It's putting our full faith and trust in Jesus as our sole Savior from sin. That's saving faith. Our third point about how to deal with doubts comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus' final words before he ascended into heaven. And that's the next verses after that previous passage I talked to you about when the disciples went up on the mountain in Galilee, saw Jesus, worshipped him, but still had doubts. Here's what Jesus said after that. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. These well-known verses from Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, shows us something. Even though some disciples still had doubts, Jesus nonetheless commissioned them, his original disciples, to have the task of witnessing to his resurrection from the dead and of baptizing and teaching people everything that he had taught his disciples. And that's that third point, that when it comes to doubts, it's not your doubts that count when it comes to being a follower of Jesus. It's relying on his power instead. I'll give you an example. When you share the gospel with someone else, you could get a number of responses. They could have intellectual objections. They could be happy the way they are, and God's law didn't work on their heart. Or their lives could turn around and come to faith. It's not your words, you sharing the words of the Bible that convince someone. It's God's power working through the word, the words from your mouth, the Holy Spirit working with those words to recreate faith in someone else. So here are three things we can do during this pandemic when doubts arise, either about something temporal or spiritual. Number one, when we are doubting, connecting with Jesus is the way to resolve them. Two, Jesus addresses our doubts in a compassionate way. And three, it's not your doubts that counts when it comes to being a follower of Jesus. It's relying on his power instead. Amen. I invite you to join me in professing our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
And at this point in today's service, if we had gathered together in the sanctuary, we would have received our offering for our resurrected Lord's mission and ministry through Epiphany. And I want to tell you, thank you so much for adjusting to new ways to giving to Epiphany Lutheran Church so that the Lord's ministry is ready when we all gather together once again in his sanctuary. And now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. After each petition, I'll say, Lord, in your mercy. And I invite you to, at home to say, hear our prayer. Almighty and most merciful God, we pray for your protection during this pandemic. The extra precautions in place would protect our members, friends, and guests from exposure to the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal those who are suffering this day from the symptoms of the coronavirus. Protect those who have been exposed to it from severe complications that would require hospitalization. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and attend to the needs of those whose loved ones have died because of the coronavirus. May their Christian friends and family members share the good news of the resurrected Lord and eternal life through him, that it may bring the peace that passes all understanding to their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the effect of Governor Doug Ducey's executive order dramatically decrease the number of coronavirus cases in Arizona. We pray especially for the Navajo Nation in Northeast Arizona, that their extraordinary precautions in place would stop the spread of the virus in their community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protect and provide for the needs of those who serve the residents of Arizona in essential occupations, government officials, our National Guard, local police and fire departments, all healthcare workers, and the multitudes of those who provide us with the daily necessities and the utilities of our houses. May we heed their advice so that they, those in need, may receive medical care and that all the needs of those who buy food may be met. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enable our local, state, and national economy to weather this pandemic. We pray especially for those who own small businesses or have been furloughed or laid off or have lost their jobs, that you would protect them from economic harm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, today we ask that your Holy Spirit and your word, the Holy Bible, would be our constant guide source of encouragement, and through Christ, the giver of peace during our times of doubt, fear, and panic. As a father once said to Jesus, as he pled for his son's healing, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. Answer our prayers for peace as Jesus answered the man's plea by healing his son. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We commend all those requests to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now let us sing I Love to Tell the Story. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of 
Jesus and His glory, of Jesus and His love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longings as nothing else can do. Tell the story, it will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story, it is pleasant to repeat what seems each time I tell it. More wonderfully sweet. I love to tell the story, for some have never heard the message of salvation from God's own holy word. I love to tell the story. It will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and His love. I love to tell the story for those who know it best. Seem hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest. And when in scenes of glory I sing the new, new song, it will be the old, old story that I have loved so long. I love to tell the story, it will be my theme in glory to tell the Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. And thank you for joining us for worship today.